<laughs> Toothpaste, very important. That nasty feeling when you haven't brushed in in a while have a name now. Biofilm, yuck. Enough with the ID. Deal thoughts, hurry, some clothes. Clean underwear, also ver very important. Phone charger, laptop charger, camera, digital recorder. What else might be needed? A couple of false IDs, just in case, and finally, most importantly, a piece of electronic equipment, especially modified for the task. Can't just toss it in, gotta be gentle with it. Was someone coming up the stairs? No, but they could be any minute now. Get out quick, but quietly. Don't let the door slam. Phoenix had never been really been cold before. He was cold in to the very middle of it. every single one of his cells. His scalp and hair were like a cap knit of ice. He couldn't see his face, but he knew his lips were crayola blue. Even his toenails were cold. Never before he had shivered long and hard as he shivered now, and shivering as hard was hard work. After a fitful night dozing against a tree trunk, Phoenix woke up with a deep ache in all of his muscles. As it being cold wasn't bad enough, now it hurt to shiver. He was wandering through the endless forest where everything looked the same. The trauma of kidnapping, confronting of with the enemy could he couldn't even see, the physical and psychological perfection of captivity the escape and near drowning, his oil uh, ordeal had drained his body and apparently his brain too. He just kept stumbling around in superior. He tried to remember the books he had read about the kid surviving in the wild. Hatchet. That kid had lived for weeks in the wilderness on his own, right? But he had had uh, a hatchet in frustration. Phoenix kicked a old rotting stump. It cracked a little, revealing an active colony of small white grubs. Grubs. Bear eat, ate grubs. Humans did too. He'll seen it all one of those crazy food shows. Phoenix looked more closely into the carvis. There's a dozen, dozens of grubs in the dead wood, pale and soft, wiggling and Wristling and squirming, his stomach heaven at the sight of them. He couldn't do it. Turning away, he took a step and stumbled on the uneven ground. Reaction dull by hunger and fall and cold, he couldn't catch a feel. He fell on his knees. He felt tears coming into his eyes and let them roll down his cheek unchecked. At least they were warm. Phoenix cried for a while. He finally stopped and his vision was clear. He saw a slick stick in front of him. Almost a crack, really. He remembered something from another television program. One of those nature's can channels. Cramp peas and termites. Eggs of Phoenix's poor frozen brain started to fall a little while. I have to get out of here and get help for the others. And I'd never be able to do if I... If I don't eat something, Phoenix pick up a stick, chew on one of the end until it was f fried and fan out the wood fibers. Now it looks like a broomstick, very tiny wick. He pushed the stick into a crack into the stub and waited for a few minutes. Slowly, carefully, he pulled out. There was three nice fat grubs clinging on the fried wood. They taste like chicken, he told himself. Phoenix took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and opened his mouth. He even stared at the computer screen. This can't be right. Some time ago, even had pulled out a call to kills. Operators over the world, asking for their help in identifying the mole of the network. No one was above suspicions. Not Emmy or Dan or not himself. As a result of the search, even couldn't believe 
what you was seeing on screen. Something this big, I have to find a way to verify it. I need to be 110% sure I, before I tell Amy. Even shook over the shivers that were crawling down his spine. Then he shoved his ephemeral revelations firmly aside and tapped into the suspect's computer. Where to start? Emails? Documents? Could this be obvious cook? Maybe too obvious? Isn't where you expect someone to, to start looking? Even mouse over to the desktop icon. Music, calendar, spreadsheet, photos, photos. One picture is worth found words. He clicked on icon after a few moments. Found a password, protect file. Quickly worked to figure out the password. Should be should use the name of the family members. Too easy. File. Open, even frown. There were several copies of photos of Nacelle. The one sent by the Vipers, which he was thrusting a lizard toward a camera. A copy of it were identical. Even looking closer to the screen. What the heck? He said out loud. Identical except for one thing. The lizards were different. Green lizards, brown lizards, spotted, striped, bug eyes. There was no question in battle about it. The photos had been manipulated. The lizards and the original photo had been swapped out for different ones. The last four photos showed the same lizard, altered slightly for the size and position. The tongue lizards from Argentina. That's what she said. Ethan sat down and gulped the air, trying to sell the sick feeling that was rolling in his stomach. South America. There was and was, she was trying to make us think it was him. She, meaning she'd head, sin head. Emmy's best friends, who knew everything, everything about Kill's operation, the damage he could do, even was on his feet and headed towards the door. He ran up the stairs down the hallway and, and showed her open the door, and hit the light switch. Drawers gapping, closed, closed, discard on the floor, all signs of a hasty exit. He he was too late. Sinhead was gone. Even spun around wildly and crashed into the door frame in his haste to get back to the computer center. He had to tell Amy and that Sinhead was the mold. If Sinhead got to her first, even heart was pounding, Amy could be in ter terrible danger.